Welcome everyone to InVet's virtual employment workshop. This week we are with Catalan Pharma Solutions. If you look down on the bottom, you'll see Brian Ford and Timothy Bassett. Uh, and we're going to get into where Catalan is, what they do, some of the transition story with Brian and Timothy, uh, and then talk about some of their open positions, what the hiring process is like, what's it like to work at Catalan, things like that. So we'll just jump in. Uh, Wes on vacation this this week. So for those of you that are used to seeing Wes start these things off, I'm sorry. Um, you've got to start with me today. So hopefully I can and can keep the transition tips as interesting as usual. But uh, we're going to start with the transition tips and then we're going to talk a little bit more about why Indiana. For those of you that are uh, either joining us live or watching the replay, some of the benefits of what it's uh, of transitioning to Indiana and, and the, the benefits you get from living here. And then why work with us? What's the benefit of, of working with InVets to try to find that next career during your transition? And then we're going to kick it over to Brian and Timothy, and they're going to talk a lot more about Catalan, about the area um, of the state that it's in and about all the work that they do. So I'm Blaine Zimmerman. Uh, I'm the director of veteran engagement. Uh, I manage uh, a team of two, our veteran engagement team, Jerry and Jeremy. You probably see Jerry over in the chat a little bit. Um, he's going to be over there highlighting some of the key things that we're talking about. So what we do here um, is, is we're the, the, the main source of contact for our transitioning veterans. So we're the ones that are working with them to try to get them into the, uh, the careers that they're looking for as they're transitioning. Um, a little bit about my background. Uh, I joined the military in 2008. I was on active duty for six years. I was at first armored in El Paso and then 10th Mountain up at Fort Drum. Did a couple of deployments and then wife and I decided to kick the tires on civilian life, but I immediately went into the National Guard and I enjoyed it. So um, after completing my MBA at Butler University, I uh, went through OCS and took a commission. I'm still an infantryman. Uh, I'm an infantry lieutenant here in the Indiana National Guard and started in InVets in April. So right after I finished my infantry basic officer leadership course, uh, came right back right at the beginning of a pandemic and started here as a director of veteran engagement. So um, let's talk a little bit about your transition. So everyone on, in our organization has done this transition and you're going to hear the individual stories of Brian and Timothy's transition later. Um, everybody's transition is a little bit different. And I think that one of the things that we talk about here in the office a lot is everybody kind of approaches it different. And if you remember what it was like in your, whether it was, uh, well, for most of you watching, it's SFL tap. Uh, for those of us that got out a few years ago, it was called ACAP. Um, and I think that we all know that there's, you know, specific individuals that you run across while you're doing that transition program. You know, you've got the guy that's the E4, the, the guaranteed hundred thousand dollar pipeline job out in North Dakota that I think everyone had the one person in their class like that. Um, and you've got people that think, well, I'm a veteran people will line up to give me a job because people love to hire veterans. And then you've got people that think like, well, I'll just, I'll wait till I get home and then I'll find something. Um, and then you've got the rare uh, folks that we really enjoy working with uh, are the ones that are out ahead of things and they start planning a year out and they go to their resume seminars and they go to fix their LinkedIn profiles and they practice their interviews. Um, try to be that person. That's a that's the best person that you can be, because the more that you do for yourself, the more that you're going to be able to set yourself up for success. There's plenty of resources out there, including ourselves, that can help you with the transition process. But we can't take you across the finish line. We can get you as far as we can. We can get you in the interview door a lot of the times, but you're going to have to do a lot to help yourself. So key, key number one is stay humble. Uh, understand that people aren't just going to hire you just because you are some awesome hua dude from a from the first ranger battalion. Uh, you've got to understand how to translate your, your military experience into civilian experience. Um, it's not the employer's job to translate your resume for them. It's your job to translate your resume for the employer. So work with somebody, work um, and figure out what those, those key terms are to be able to be transferable to your civilian uh, resume. Make sure you're networking. So, for one year, your very first year of LinkedIn, you get LinkedIn premium for free as a veteran. And that's uh, somewhere around $60 a month you're saving. It's, it's free money. It gives you a lot more insight into the platform. It gives you some more messaging that you can do um, to be able to expand your network. 
uh, find mentors on that network, you know, consider the employer over the position, but also consider um, what uh, industry you want to go into. So look at the industry you want to go into. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the pharmaceutical industry. Find some of the key players in that industry and then find the, the key employers and some people at that uh that organization that you could reach out to and see if they might be able to mentor you. Wouldn't suggest going after the CEO. They probably don't have time for it. Maybe find some one of those middle level managers or another veteran that's in the organization. So you can learn more about the organization and you can find out, is this really the industry I wanna get into? Is this really the company that I wanna get into? Because the last thing you wanna do is go, oh, I'm just gonna go take job X because it pays Y. 90% uh, of the time you're gonna find out that you don't like the company, you don't like the, um, the the lifestyle, whatever the case may be, and that dollar amount doesn't seem to be nearly as important anymore. The other side of it, be flexible. So, uh, you know, maybe you know exactly where you want to move, maybe you don't. Um, be open to opportunities. Maybe you want to work in tech and you are dead set on that. That doesn't mean you should close the door to other industries as well. So make sure you're staying flexible because the what your idea, you know, say you're six months out right now, your ideal job could change between now and that day that you sign your DD-214. And lastly, make sure you seek help. But like I said at the top, it's your responsibility to own your transition. So there's plenty of resources out there uh, that can help with the transition process. But ultimately, you're at the top of your success or failure. So make sure you're owning that in the same way that you would own any of the successes or failures in the military. All right. So let's talk about our organization in Indiana as a whole. And I'm not going to take a whole lot more time. So our organization was started in 2018. And like I said, 100 percent veteran run. Um, we have a Marine. We've got uh, some Air Force presence and we've got a lot of Army presence. Um, so uh, we've all been through that transition before. Um, we provide that digital connection point. So when you come on and create a profile on invets.org, you're able to see all the open positions that companies have put onto our website. We also, you will be contacted by a member of my team within 48 to 72 hours, and they'll start trying to plug you into the right places and connect you to the right people. If it's something like resume help or interview help. We've got resources to be able to point you in the right direction. If it's something that you come in and say, hey, I really wanted to work for this organization. I've applied a couple times and they're not on your website. We're going to do what we can to try to find a contact there and potentially open a door for you. Um, so the, with that being said, we do have over 150 employment partners. Uh, right around 60 of them currently have jobs listed. Um, the reason there's asterisks on the open positions for one, that's open positions throughout the state, but two, uh, that was pre-COVID numbers. Um, so COVID has obviously changed things quite a bit. People are hiring more than you probably think they're hiring, but there are other industries that aren't hiring right now or on a freeze. The, mo the four main industry pathways that we work with are healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, and technology. We're gonna learn a little bit about um, healthcare and the pharmaceutical side of things today. Uh, from a log logistics and manufacturing standpoint, we're one of the top five states in the country. Um, obviously, being uh, you know with a, within a two-day drive of I think like seventy-five percent of America makes a big makes a big reason why we're so big in logistics, and we are the fourth largest or fourth most productive manufacturing state in the country. Technology has been a huge boost, a uh, huge boom over the past couple of years. In 2019, there's an 85% increase in technology jobs in Indiana. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the uh, technology growth here in downtown Indianapolis with Salesforce. Um, and in the next two years, another Google campus coming into town. Um, so we partner with a lot of local and national veteran service organizations. So whether that's something that can help you with your transition or just an organization you want to get uh, to be a part of. So, you know, like I said earlier, if you need some help with like a resume or interview building skills, we've got organizations to help you with that. If you just want to get involved and do something like Team RWB or, or be a member of the American Legion or VFW, we've got the resources to help point you in the right direction for that. Actually, most of those are in our building. So here's a picture of our home site, if you uh, or homepage, excuse me. Uh, on the top right, right of your screen, you'll see "Get Started." That's where you can create a profile. Once you've created a profile, is when it opens up the ability to see the job board, and you'll be able to see more information about each company that's within 
our website. Um, so you'll notice sometimes there are companies that are in there that don't have jobs posted. I think that we even have some companies that have jobs posted that don't have fully built out profiles. Um, so you'll get a mixture of the of both. Uh, but like I said, if there is some uh, organization that you are interested in and you don't see on there, make sure you reach out and we'll do what we can to help. So basically, I kind of already walked through this. You create a profile, you check out the careers. Somebody from my team is going to reach out to you, submit an application. The benefit of submitting an application off our website is once you've submitted that application, uh, someone from that organization is going to get, well, I shouldn't say someone, the um, veteran hiring resource at that organization is going to get an email from our website saying this veteran applied through invets.org. They're also going to get a follow up uh, email or phone call from one of us in the office saying, hey, um, this person applied and we're going to advocate for you. So you have the ability to explore both careers uh, and specific companies. So this is an example of the technology career, the technology industry on the site. Just kind of gives you a basic breakdown, some some job titles for those that, you know, maybe are like, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I kind of I don't have an idea about different industries and thing like things like that. So to give you an idea of what types of jobs are within each industry, so you can give you a better understanding of where you can start looking for your job search. If you, uh, uh, each of our employers have built out these profiles. Um, you know, you can see videos from the organization. You can see which open positions are at each uh, organization. You can look at career pathways. I will say that, you know, the website sh will show, you know, two or three career pathways. By no means does that mean that's every career pathway at the organization. Um, but the, it gives you a lot more information and it gives you the ability to kind of dive in and see, is this something that might work for me? So kind of shifting gears a little bit, if you're kind of on the fence about where you want to move when you're transitioning, um, Indiana uh, has multiple things that we've done over the past few years to try to benefit veterans and entice them to want to move here at the end of their service. So one of them is free college tuition for children at a state school. So if you are a disabled veteran, depending on your rating, you can get free or discounted uh, college tuition at a state school. You can find that information on IN.gov. Um, if you have a Purple Heart, if you've received a Purple Heart, uh, there's also free uh, tuition for children of veterans. So it's one of those things. And we see this a lot when we talk to the folks that are retired and, you know, they have 13, 14, 15 year old children and they're thinking about school. They're like, oh, my kids can go to school for free if I move there. Yeah, that might make some, some sense to look at that. So uh, 2019, last August. Indiana House Bill 1010 was passed. So what that is, is it's full income state tax exemption for military retirement pensions. So what that means is if you were to move here and you were a retired military, um, your state taxes would be exempt because or your state tax would be exempt from your military retirement pay. Um, this is being phased in over the next two years. So it's going in in percentages. So the percentage gets a little bit higher each year until January 1, 2020, when 100% of your military pension will be tax free in the state of Indiana. A couple other benefits that I like to mention. So property tax deductions, once again, depends on your level of disability. Um, but if you're, you know, especially if you're looking to move to a place like uh, Hamilton County, or something like that with a little bit higher property taxes. This could be an incentive to say, man, I really wanted to move up there, but those property taxes are crazy. Well, you have the ability through the VA to uh, deduct a little bit off your property tax. And then hunting and fishing licenses. I know uh, Jerry loves talking about this. He's one of the members of my veteran engagement team. He says that every dollar that you save on your hunting and fishing license means you, that's another dollar you get to spend at Cabela's. So if you're a hunter, uh, hunter or fisherman, uh, it's a really great benefit. It, there's discounts both on annual fishing licenses and uh, lifetime hunting and fishing licenses. So I uh, won't spend too much time on the communities. We're going to talk a little bit more about the central region, specifically kind of the very southern tip of the central region today with um, Catalan. But just as a, a basic breakdown, if you're not familiar with Indiana, central, that's Indianapolis, basically goes up to Lafayette all the way down to about Bloomington. It's a relatively large bubble. The Southwest region, you're getting down by Evansville area. Um, that's where Crane Service Naval Warfare Base is. Uh, the Southeast region, you're gonna be close to Louisville and Cincinnati. 
Northwest region, second largest city in the state, which is Fort Wayne, um, getting up close to Detroit, Toledo type area. And then the Northwest region uh, is what here in the state people call the region. Um, and that's up by Chicago. So a lot of diversity in kind of what you're looking at. You know, if you're really into, um, you, you know, maybe you're a huge Cubs and Bears fan, but want to live on this side of the, the state lines, you live in the Northwest region. Um, you know, if you really like the outdoors and you want to have five, six acres, maybe the Southwest or Southeast region is better for you. So, and, and then once again, if you, if you want to live in the suburbs and, and be really close to work downtown, the Fort Wayne and Indianapolis are also great areas. So um, there's a lot of diversity there. We're going to talk a little bit more about Bloomington and what Bloomington has to offer and what's around there here in a few minutes. And I came, oh, right in the middle of what I said. I said I'd stay to 15 to 20 minutes and I hit 17. So uh, from here, I'm going to hand it over to Brian and Timothy and I'm going to drop off so you guys can talk a little bit about Catalent um, and then I'll pop back on at the end and we'll do a little Q&A if that works. Sounds good. All right. Uh, move to the next slide. So my name is Brian Ford. I am the site security leader uh, here at Catalan. I've been here for the past year. Um, I transitioned from the Army. Actually, uh, I, my last day in the Army was October 4th of uh, 2019. So it's just been one year out of the Army for me. Uh, I was a, a officer in the Army for eight years. Um, my last duty station was actually on Fort Riley, Kansas with 1st Infantry Division um, with 2nd Brigade uh, when I transitioned and uh, on Fort Riley I had command of the, the 41st uh, Route Clearance Company, uh, best 20 months of my life. So uh, before then I, my, my very first duty station was over in uh, Germany with 2nd Cavalry, I uh, also served with uh, 36th Engineer Brigade and 1st uh, Engineer Battalion as well. Um, so it's it's been an interesting year. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, um, you know, it, I was always uh, had a little bit of trepidation about leaving the army uh, and what that would mean, and you know, what what the big differences are going to be. And now I look back and I'm kind of smiling on how, how much of a good decision this was. Not just be, not because the army was bad or anything like that, just because there there are such great opportunities out here. And if only you guys knew about them, uh, and hopefully you'll you'll find out. And we can tell you about uh, one here at Catlin today, but. Um, that's my brief intro, uh, Tim. If you want to talk about yourself for a second, then I'll jump into the slide deck. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, my name's Tim Bassett. Uh, I spent 13 years uh, active duty, uh, most of those years in the 82nd Airborne, uh, all American, all the way. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I spent most of my time in aviation. I did a couple different jobs in the Army, but like I said, most of my time was in aviation. And then uh, I transitioned out in August of 2018. So I've been here for two years. I, you know, I, I tell people I got out of the army on a Friday and, and then Monday I started my career at Catalan. So I took, you know, no time off and there was, it was a really uh, like quick and rapid uh, transition for me. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Brian nailed it on the head where I, I look back at my years in the army very fondly and there's a lot of, uh, you know, good people that I met and I, and I was able to um, uh, create a lot of good stories and a lot of good memories. But the uh, opportunity that has come with getting a job at Catalan and kind of getting into the pharmaceutical world has just been uh, amazing. Like I, I look at my life now and I look at it two years ago and those, I, I, you know, I don't believe that it's like the same person in both of those stories because it's just, it's such a wild uh, and, and different theme. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have for right now. Brian, if you want to get into it. Yep. Uh, so this is this is the front of our building. So Catalan uh, Biologics is located uh, in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, so to get your kind of bearings, we're uh, like uh, Blaine was saying, kind of on the very southern port of the central region. Um, right next to the Hoosier National Forest, um, Indiana University is here. Uh, we're about an hour south of Indianapolis. Um, a, a great area, absolutely. Um, it, it's got a little bit of everything. Um, it's got a little bit of like a small city feel, but you also have you know, Hoosier National Forest is you know about 15 minutes away. You got Lake Monroe, Lake Lemon. You got uh, bunch of, uh, you got uh, Brown County Forest, you, you got a whole bunch of outdoor options that are around. So 
you know, whether you live inside Bloomington, you know, in, in more of like a city suburban type atmosphere, or you, you live on the outskirts uh, and you get some more, more land to you, there, there's a whole bunch of options here. And I, I, I know people who commute, you know, upwards of 45 minutes, you know, from some areas because you know, everything's pretty accessible with the, all the construction they've done on the highways recently. But um, that's just a little bit about our location. Um, and I'm going to get a, a little bit more into what we do. Um, so, so Catalan, uh, we've been talking about healthcare, but it, it's a lot more than healthcare. But what we are is we're a contract development manufacturing organization. And all that means is that we manufacture our products, which are um, you know, biological um, drugs and therapies for other companies like the major pharmaceuticals. We, we partner with 21 of the top 25 um, pharmaceutical companies in the country. Um, and we basically serve as, think of it as we serve as extra capacity for them. We, we contract with them uh, to produce you know, their therapies and, and their vaccines. Um, I, I can't go into great detail about the clients because there's a lot of confidentiality stuff, but you uh, may have seen in the uh, news releases recently that we are partnering with uh, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. Um, and we have a, a very significant part, uh, a role to play with, um, with the vaccine effort in this country. Um, so we're doing really great things over here um, for, <laughs> for the nation. And it's it all comes back to our vision um, of being the world's most trusted, reliable, and innovative drug development and delivery partner. Um, so to be more specific, to, so it, we are, like I said earlier, we're in the healthcare industry, but we're so much more because we are manufacturing um, as well. And, and this site is kind of like an all-inclusive, all-in-one place to where we're not just, you know, um, filling um you know, drugs here or, you know, doing a packaging here. We're doing everything here. So it's, a, it's an extremely versatile company. And that's, uh, that's why we kind of outpace some of our competition uh, is uh, we can do everything here in one stop. Um, so uh, to kind of summarize it, we, we get bulk drug substance from clients. You know, we grow and produce, you know, more of it and then end up filling it into uh, delivery mechanisms, whether that's into vials, uh, or syringes um, or other methods. Um, and then we package it up and then we end up shipping it back to the customer. So when you, when you think about all the roles there are within that company, we have everything from logistics and, and supply chain uh, to manufacturing operators, uh, equipment specialists, technical specialists, facilities maintenance, uh, service and support, IT, quality assurance, the the amount of different types of job roles in this company is absolutely incredible. Um, it's hard to believe that you have so many different people under one roof and everybody working as one con concerted effort. Um, but that's what's here. Uh, it, it, so there's so many different opportunities and, and I'll show you in a second what, what kind of uh, jobs we have open here. Um, but uh, everything that we uh, we do here, we we strive, we uh, build off of our values, uh, and patient first uh, is the, is the most important value of that uh, of all. Uh, we put patients at the center of what we do, and to ensure their safety, reliability uh, of our drugs and substances, um, and that that is our mission here to make people's lives better. Uh, we manufacture therapies for develop, develop debilitating uh, illnesses, we manufacture vaccines, we manufacture so much stuff and it's all aimed at um, improving the health uh, and wellness of, of our citizens and you know, friends, family members and everybody. So if you, if, you're, if you got into the army or Navy or, or whatever, um, military in general, uh, because you wanted to serve something higher than yourself and then bigger than yourself, you can absolutely continue to still do that here because that is what we do every day. Every day we're saving lives, we're making lives better. And that's something that really pulled me here um, was that mission statement that they had. I thought, you know, that, that was a huge reason why I wanted to join. I, and I wanted to, to be an officer in the Army. I wanted to lead soldiers, but I wanted to make a huge difference. And uh, I continue to get that same opportunity here. Um, so it's, it's, been a it's been a great transition for me, um, and an easy transition. Um, uh, because of the values that this company um, supports. 
Uh, and just to kind of give you an idea of uh, what our impact looks like. So right now we have about, let's say, 17, uh, 1,700 employees, and we are very rapidly growing. Um, and our impact uh, across the pharmaceutical uh, spectrum is, is continuing to grow every single day. We're, we're producing more and more um, doses. So we're, we're producing more and more products partnering with more companies and Catalan everywhere is growing. And Catalan is also, it's, it's a global um, company. You know, we're, we're publicly traded um, and we have uh, multiple sites across the United States. We have uh, sites globally. We're in South America, North America, Europe, uh, Asia, we're all over the place. So there's, there's also opportunities, you know, um, you're pretty much all over the globe. Um, you know, once you once you uh, once you get here, you kind of realize, you know, wow, this is it's not even just this little site. We're we're literally everywhere. We got uh, places all over the globe. Um, so a very large impact. Um, uh, assisted nearly 50 percent, 50 percent of all FDA approvals in the last 10 years. That's an incredible number. Um, so that's a little bit about um, the company and really what um, why we are coming. Uh, and, and to InVets and why we got that partnership. Uh, I had a conversation with my um, general manager you know, months and months ago about um, recruiting veterans and why veterans are so critical to companies and, and, and what they have to offer, uh, that they're really an untapped resource. You know, we have programs, you know, that are out there for, you know, recruiting like officers into the corporate sector and that, that those things are, uh, companies like that are everywhere, but really like enlisted soldiers or even, um, you know, ch chiefs and all that, they offer great technical expertise that there's really not a great funnel um, from, from corporate recruiters that we see from, from enlisted soldiers. Um, and that technical expertise, you might not realize that you have it, but you have a ton of experience dealing with technical things. You have a ton of experience in difficult environments where results are important, but um, we really don't see that much recruitment coming out of the enlisted side. So um, we kind of looked at options for how to how to change that and how to uh, improve recruitment at the site. Um, and serve, which is actually our employee resource group for veterans. We have a group here it's devoted to improving the culture, improving the recruitment. Um, and making it a space, you know, where veterans can feel comfortable, you know, have a, have a voice, have a community that they can uh, lean on if they ever need anything. Uh, that group, um, you know, reached out to InVets, and they've been absolutely great. There's there's tons of avenues within InVets um, where you can uh, get benefits coming into the state. You can get relocation assistance, and then Indiana offers a ton of uh, assistance for veterans. Um, but we're kind of using each other to get um, veterans into the site. Uh, I, I don't think you realize the the value that you bring, and I, and I don't often think that veterans know how to communicate that. You know, and they also might look at a uh, a job opening and see something that you know looks like, oh, well, they're looking for something very specific. I might not have exactly this. You might not have exactly that uh, and how they worded it, but I guarantee you, you have a lot more experience. Um, and a lot more technical ability than you think you have. Um, so we really wanted to reach out and tap into that resource uh, because you, you guys bring values, your values based um, people who you know believe in something bigger than yourself, you uh, believe in a good work ethic, um, you know, and also you have a lot of technical skills. So that, that's really why we're here. Um, and we have over 225 job openings right now at Catalan. Uh, and if you look at the types of positions, manufacturing, quality assurance, engineering, supply chain, research science, um, take, hop onto our website and uh, at catalent.com and just kind of go through the careers page and look at what's out there, read the descriptions. Uh, and if you, if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out to us. I'm sure they'll provide our information, but I'm definitely willing to answer any questions you guys have or, or maybe steer you in the right direction. But um, yeah, give it a look. It, we, we have a little bit of everything here and it's a really great place um, to work. And I've, I've enjoyed my last year here. Um, so I've gone on for a while. I'm going to let uh, Tim talk about his, uh, his transition story too. I think it's a little bit better than mine because uh, I didn't use one of those corporate recruiters. So it was, it was very boring for me um, kind of getting funneled straight here, but um, go ahead, Tim. 
Yeah. So the uh, story I like to tell because it's my story. So it's one of my favorites. Um, but I did uh, 13 years active duty, like I said, and uh, I, I got into a, a situation or, a, you know, the, the army life just wasn't benefiting my family anymore and it wasn't conducive to um, the direction I wanted to go. So I decided to transition out in uh, mid 2018. Uh, and so at that time it was the ACAP process, which, you know, uh, like Blaine said, is now the SFL uh, TAP program. But, uh, you know, when I got into the ACAP process or, or the ACAP program, and then start transitioning out. Um, you know, I was getting a lot of feedback from these uh, counselors and and what have you, saying, you know, these are the jobs you should apply for because these are the only jobs you should you can get. And you know, it was a contradiction. You know, everyone had a recruiter tell them that like when you get out of you know whatever branch, you know, mil- you know, get out of the military, there's going to be jobs just lined up for you. And everyone's going to want to hire you and, you know, you're going to go make a million dollars. And then as I'm getting out of the army, I have everyone telling me the exact opposite. And so I decided to believe my recruiter, which is the second time I've done that in my life. And, you know, um, uh, this time it didn't bite me in the butt, which I'm super excited about. Uh, But I just got on the Internet and I can't even remember how I found Catalan. Um, Just you know, on the Google typing away, looking for jobs. I knew that I wanted to be in the Indiana area. Um, I just wasn't sure where got found Catalan applied, uh, you know, to a a maintenance job here and thought, well, I don't meet any of the requirements for that place. So I just kind of moved on and started uh, looking elsewhere. And then about a month goes by and I get a phone call from a Catalan recruiter asking me if I'm still interested in, in the position. And I remember being at home and I have my phone in my one hand and I, and I'm, I have my laptop in the other and I'm Googling Catalan again to, you know, figure out what is Catalan and what, you know, what did I get myself into? And so I'm, you know, on the phone with this recruiter and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, pills and vials, got it. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, we set up the interview and I, I, I came up, uh, and, and talk to the person who would end up being my boss and, and a couple of the people who worked here. And, you know, they decided that um, even though my background was aviation, I had a skill set and a talent that they were willing to mature and develop into something that um, benefited uh, or I'm sorry, you know, benefited me in, in, in uh, working for Catalan. Um, and, and at Catalan, you know, I said I've been here for two years and it's been such an amazing place because not only did they take my skill set and transform it into something that now I can take anywhere in the world truly, um, they also recognized uh, the potential that I had. And, uh, you know, I've been promoted and it was, a, it was a huge promotion of going from a maintenance technician to an engineering technologist is a, is a pretty big jump. Um, but Catalan is one of those companies that doesn't always, you know, they're not looking at your degree. They don't, it's not that they don't care what you have on paper, but they're more interested in the person and what the person is capable of. And they have the mindset, um, you know, to develop people just like the military does, you know, the military will take any Joe or Jane off the street and, and turn them into a leader and turn into them into a professional and Catalan is, you know, doing the same thing. And, um, kind of like what Brian said, uh, you know, in the military, you, in, you know, for, for those of you who joined straight out of high school or, or when you're really young, you might not have a real good concept of this, but when you get out of the military, you're going to lose contact or you're going to lose that feeling of being something bigger and you're going to lose it. Like the next day, like I remember waking up Saturday morning, you know, I, I signed out of Fort Bragg, uh, Friday afternoon and I woke up Saturday morning, like, what did I just do? What was I thinking? Is it too late to go back? You know, panic, panic, panic. And then Monday I started here at Catalan and I immediately knew that I stepped out of something big and into something bigger. And, um, you know, it's a feeling that's really hard to find, um, in the world in general and especially on the civilian side. 
Um, so that, yeah, this has been, this has been great. And, you know, I'm only going to grow from here. You know, I haven't, there's no plateauing at a place like this. So if you're an individual, you know, there are a couple things that you need to bring to the table. You have to be self-driven. Uh, you know, you have to be motivated. Um, but coming from the military, you know, working a 12 hour day and, and, you know, really putting your shoulder into it isn't anything new to any of you. So this will be an easy transition. And um, I guess the potential here is just uh, limitless. Um, so yeah, come work at Catalan. It's super cool. And uh, that's, you know. Thanks, Tim. I think that's gonna be the tagline for the replay. Come work at Catalan. It's gonna be cool. <laughs> you get that approved through your marketing team. Um, so one of the things I wanted to touch on there was, you know, you, you're now uh, an engineering uh, what's the exact word? technician. Senior engineering technologist is my position. You're senior engineering technologist, and you do not have an engineering degree. No, no. So I think that's a, a big point to kind of to reiterate there for folks that are coming out thinking like, Oh, well, I don't know if I could go work for a pharmaceutical company because I'm not a biophysicist or a, a bioengineer. Um, mm -hmm. how, what was that process like to be able to go and move into that position? So I had, you know, the competition is um, stiff, I guess is the word. It's, I mean, it's, it's a competitive business and you have a lot of people wanting to do a lot of great things and you have those people with those four-year degrees that you're going to come you know shoulder to shoulder against um but i just i just decided that i was going to be the best at what i was doing at any time which is a mindset i i greatly contribute to my time in the military and my time in the army is you're you know the army and you know the military in general they just they just pump you up. You're always the best. You're always, you're, you're always in the best unit in the best platoon in the best squadron. You know, you're op even if you're literally in the worst, you're, you're going to have someone in front of you, you know, you're going to be standing in formation. Someone's going to be telling you that you're the best and everyone's jealous that they're not you. And I just decided, well, I'm going to, I'm going to take that with me and I'm just going to be the, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to work the hardest when everyone else is on break or when everyone else is, sitting down and, and watching YouTube or checking Facebook, like I'm going to be getting after it. And, you know, it took me a year and, you know, my wife probably wasn't the most happiest with me on some days, but like, you know, like I just, I didn't stop and I didn't stop for a year. And I got that, I got that promotion. I, I, I you know, was able to step into an engineering position with no four year degree, just, you know, I, I proved uh, that I had what it took in Catalan, rewarded that, you know? So, uh, I hope that answered your question. Cause I rambled there a little bit at the end, but, uh, yeah, it absolutely did. Yeah. Cause I, th I think that that's one of the things that, you know, and, and I talk to folks and, and I know my team talks to folks and they're like, well, I don't know if I can do X, Y, or Z cause I don't have a degree. Um, yeah. and, and that's one of the, the great things about us having, you know, these employment partners like you guys is we can say, actually, no, like you don't, you don't absolutely have to have one. Like obviously it helps, um, to get your foot in the door from time to time, but there's companies out there that are, the reason that they sign up with us is because they're interested in veterans because they know what veterans went through to get to where they're at now. Um, so, so for somebody that's about to apply or maybe has applied, you know, a week or two ago, um, what, what can they expect to go through with the hiring process? Like how many interviews, how long does it usually take? When should they hear from somebody? Yeah, that that whole process can vary uh, depending on what kind of position that you're looking for. I mean, if you're if you're looking to get something like a manufacturing op operator, or more of an entry level position uh, with more room to grow later, um, that that process will be a lot quicker than something that maybe they're looking for somebody with more experience. Uh, what I would say first going into it is, you know, apply, you know, early um, and then have the have patience because it, it, it may take you know, a little bit of time before you hear back, uh, but you know, eventually you will hear back. Um, and depending on the position, um, yeah, you could, I, I would assume at least two interviews uh, and, and how we're 
kind of scheduling them now is most of them are virtual interviews. Um, you know, we used to bring people on site uh, back before COVID, but now we're having a lot more with uh, how we handle visitors at the site. So uh, I would expect uh, uh, yeah, um, vid video interviews uh, to be utilized. Uh, some, sometimes uh, it does necessitate to have somebody come on site every once in a while, but um, I, I would say, you know, give it, leave yourself some time, you know, uh, if it were me a, a month or two before, you know, my, my ETS date, you know, would, would be a comfortable uh, room, room, especially if you have, um, um, you know, ETS leave that you can, you can bank on as well, you know, that helps, um, but uh, they're, they're flexible to work with the timing of the position too, so, I mean, even if you think you might be a little early to apply, you know, the, you can you can talk that out and reason with them like because I mean I scheduled my my start date was um, I think it was about like a month uh, after I accepted the position uh, and that was perfectly fine um, depending on the position you know you, you can have a lot of time uh, if you need to but uh, I think that's what you what you expect just just have a little patience with the process sometimes it um, you, know, you might you know, not hear back as quickly as you might like but um, yeah, it's a process there there's uh, Plenty of positions open to, um, so don't be afraid to just jump out and you know and try. Well, and, and to kind of show the diversity of different roles within Catalan, I mean, we we talked about Timothy and, and being an engineering um, uh, person, and Brian, you're a site security leader. Um, is that physical security? Is that infrastructure? Like, what what is that? What exactly is a site security leader? Yeah. Uh, so think of it just like the head of security for the building. So what I do is I'm in charge of the site's physical security. I'm in charge of their uh, all the contract security officers that work here. Um, investigations, um, crisis management, uh, emergency response. Um, and my background is, again, I, I don't, just like Max, Max you know, might not have had you know, the engineering degree, you know, I didn't have corporate security experience, but I had a ton of experience with security in, you know, in the military, even as an engineer officer, um, you know, working on, on base camp security. You know, I, we worked down at the uh, southern border back in 2018, 2019, you know, doing operations with um, you know, different government agencies. So, you know, doing risk management, even as a... Um, you know, an army officer risk management, you know, is is everywhere. You have to do this risk assessment, this risk assessment. You know, they can see the parallels in all that, and um, you know, so that so that's what my position is kind of, and, and it it's weird. Where do they kind of like take a chance, and you know, uh, they're they're willing to accept the talent and understand that you know the proficiency will come because you're getting people that you know you can develop. Um, you're getting people that have a strong work ethic that have proven themselves in tough technical environments at times. So that's the value that you're really bringing. And it's not necessarily, you know, that you haven't worked in the pharma industry before, you know, if it doesn't really matter so much here and they're willing to develop you. Yeah. And I mean, you can see also just purely from the slide too. So HR, customer support, accounting, IT, like those are the types of roles that I, th I don't think people think about too much when they think a pharmaceutical company. And and I, I, we've had these same types of conversations. We've had a couple hospitals that have been on. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the things that they really want to push is like, hey, we're not just doctors and nurses. And, mm -hmm. and same with you guys. It's it's not just uh, engineers and people in a lab. Uh, somebody's got to run the building. Somebody's got to do payroll. Somebody's got to um you know, make sure that all the books are, are good by the end of the month. Um, so it, it's a, and like you said, it's a multinational corporation. Um, so the ability to have some pretty cool, you know, maybe travel experiences or things like that are, are there. Um, and, and so I think that's just something I wanted to reiterate for folks that are, you know, have no idea what, what the pharmaceutical industry looks like. And they maybe just think that it's a bunch of people in lab coats with like one of these things, and a beaker. Um, sure, I bet. Those. We do have those. <laughs> yeah. but it, it's not exactly like a CVS, you know? It's, right. It's Yeah, I, one of the first words I learned when I got here was pipette, because you just see the person just doing this. Yeah. You know, you're like, what is that? <laughs> That's science. Like, all right, if you say so. So, <laughs> even the uh, talk a little bit more about the area. So, you mentioned 
who's your national forest. And I talked about the hunting and fishing licenses. Like this is a huge for people not from Indiana. This is a giant national forest. I mean, it goes from Bloomington all the way basically down to the Ohio River. Um, and then what are some of your other favorite parts about Bloomington? So I would say my favorite thing about Bloomington is probably the restaurants. Um, it's a very, I see Tim laughing. <laughs> I mean, he nailed it. He nailed it right on the head. Yeah, they have, uh, it, you know, it's a college town. They've got tons of bars and everything. I'm not really that person anymore. Maybe, uh, maybe as a lieutenant, I was back in Germany. Um, but, uh, they have great restaurants. It's very eclectic. They have, you know, if you want, you know, decent Mexican or decent uh, barbecue or burgers or um, really, uh, or vegetarian, it's literally all on the same street, uh, yeah. up on the square. Um, so gr absolutely great food. Um, there's, you know, they got a mall here. You're, you're you're, you're also, I think one of the underrated things is you're close to everything. So, I mean, you're an hour out from Indy, you're, you know, uh, less than two hours to Louisville, you know, maybe three to four hours to Nashville, about three hours to Chicago. You can drive anywhere on a weekend around here um, and get there pretty quickly. You can go up to you know Lake Michigan and hang out on the beach up there. It only takes you about three hours. Um, so the, lo the location is great, and, and if hunting and fishing is your thing, um, you know, Lake Monroe has been pretty. It's a, it's a it's a good lake to get out on. I have kayaks, and my wife and I, you know, we, we get out on the lake, and you know, I fish, and she just paddles around for you know two hours and <laughs> gets bored and then yells at me. Uh, lake Lynn, and, it's a uh, like hidden gym down there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the smallmouth are, are really good over there too, from what I hear uh, on Lemon. And then, you know, last weekend I went, um, you know, hunting down in the national forest, you know, it's a huge national forest. You just run around and shoot guns and, and don't tell anybody I said that though, <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's, it's a good time. You know, there's, there's great options here. Yeah. That's the Southern part of Indiana, um, from a national parks, national forests, uh, state parks, uh, cause Brown County state parks just around the corner from you guys as well. Like if you're an outdoors person, Southern Indiana is a great place. Um, and, and like Max said, uh, I mean, if you want to, if you're the type of person that wants to go buy some land and not be near the city, that's, that's a great place to do it because you can buy the land and you're still like, uh, Brian said, and, and a really close drive to anything. You can be close to Bloomington. You're only an hour from Indy and a couple hours from other major cities as well. Um, so from a, from an outdoorsman's perspective, uh, that, that Southern Indiana vibe is pretty sweet. Um, so, uh, how, uh, how crazy has life been with, with, uh, you know, COVID and, and things like that with Catalan? How's the, how's the work-life balance been able to be achieved? I mean, uh, I'll strike first. I, I, yes. Um, it's definitely been, um, full throttle. Uh, so we, like I said, we, we've been expanding like crazy. And with that comes, you know, some growing pains, but also some great opportunities to shine. So I've gotten to take a whole bunch of projects and have some great opportunities to, to make an impact here. Um, and uh, I think it's really just been, a, for me, it's been a great opportunity. I've been able to get out at reasonable hours, you know, actually, I mean, I'm working less now than I was in command. So, you know, and I don't have to come in here at, at zero six and do PT in the morning, although we do have a fitness center, so I could. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think, I think the work-life balance has been working pretty, pretty well for me. I mean, it, it, it don't, I, there was, um, you know, when I first started and get my feet on the ground, you know, I, I was here quite a bit, um, just to get more comfortable. And now I'm into a nice routine where, you know, I can keep reasonable hours. I can kick my guys out, you know, when 1700 comes around, like, Hey, go home. We got this and it's all right. So, um, it's been all right for me, but definitely pretty fast paced and a lot to do and a lot. But and then, you know, we've been hiring so many people and there's so many more opportunities here, too. So and what about you, Tim? Well, you know, I never uh, I've been doing this for two years. Not once have I missed been uh, sitting at the company until twenty hundred waiting for someone, you know, to find their MVGs. Um, you know, so that's never happened here. I've never had to sit around all day just waiting for someone to like figure out where their computer is. Um, so yeah, you, this place 
uh, and I, I can't speak for the whole industry, obviously, but I can speak for cattle in Bloomington. Um, you know, this is the kind of place where you can put in as much as you want and you're going to get it back. You know, the uh, concept of overtime or being paid for overtime is lost on uh, military people because you're just expected, you know, to do the thing. Like you come in at six, you do your PT. And, you know, if you get home at 1800, uh, that was a short day, you know, and uh, you might just be out. Um, uh, I don't know, out in the woods until nine o'clock at night uh, for no good reason. And uh, that hasn't happened here. Um, but like if I do, you know, we have uh, we're I should back up when I was in the maintenance position, you know, we do uh, twice a year. We do like deep maintenance or whatever you want to call it. And that just keeps all, all the things running. And it's not uncommon to put a 16 hour day in on those, you know, during those timelines or during those time frames. But, uh, you know, my paycheck definitely notices it, you know, like, you know, you, you, like I said, you, you put it or you get what you put in around here. Um, but now I'm in a position where I'm like, Brian, I come in, I come in a little bit earlier, uh, cause I kind of like beating the traffic in. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I do my eight hours and I, I can clock out and go home and, yeah, there's no, there's, I don't get a text. I don't get a text at any point, like, hey, formations in 10 minutes. Like, so, uh, yeah, kind of, it's a good place to be. And it's uh, one of the things I wanted to say about Bloomington, because I'm absolutely in love with this town. It's like they took the downtown of a major city and just removed it and made it its own thing to see if it would survive. And that's what Bloomington's turned into, because it's like, if you go down 4th Street, you know, if anyone who, who watches this is familiar with Bloomington, you go down 4th Street and there's um, like an Indian restaurant, Mexican restaurant, and a Thai restaurant all in a row. And I mean, you could just like eat, you know, around the world and and never have to repark your car. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I guess like the, the restaurants in Bloomington are fantastic. Um, right. <laughs> the uh well i want to i want to thank you guys for coming on and, and teaching us so much about cattle and, and sharing your transition stories um and uh for anybody that has any questions um you know feel free we've we've put brian and, and tim's uh linkedin profiles in the chat and um I, I believe even the folks that watch the replay will have access to that chat as well um, if you have any questions uh, or, or just want to reach out, um, you can email me at blaine at invets.org or you can just check out our website, invets.org. One thing I did fail to mention for those transitioning that is uh, a pretty big benefit is as you're in the transition process um, and you reach out to us, we can help you set up a uh, Hilton Honors account and uh, depending on a couple factors can award up to 100,000 Hilton Honors points. So if you're coming back and you're in the middle of that transition, and you're, you know, coming from Fort Bragg uh, and, and need to do an interview. Um, you can come up here and stay basically for free um, while you're doing that interview process. Or even I've worked with some families that like uh, were moving from uh, Camp Pendleton out of San Diego. They didn't have to pay for one hotel for that whole drive from San Diego to, into, to Bloomington, actually. Um, so it's a great program. Um, and it's just another another thing that we can help work with on your on your transition. So um, thanks for coming on and talking about Catalan. I really appreciate it. Uh, check us all out on LinkedIn and uh, we will see you guys at our next employment workshop.